So this is a recent tool haul that I picked up off Facebook Marketplace. And in the center on top of that toolbox, you'll see the blue socket set. So this is what it looks like with none of the sockets or the holder inside. And then this is how nasty some of the sockets were. You can see a lot of rust. So off camera, I did soak them in vinegar first and then took them to the wire wheel to get rid of those big chunks of black that you saw. And after that, this is a rust inside this little beach bucket. And just take it, scotch bright pad, scrub off any of the last remaining stuff, rinse it in water, and then dry it off. And you're not going to get all the water on the inside, but I did. You can use compressed air if you really wanted to. So after that, get them all lined up. And I like to stand them vertically. That way, any of the water that may be in there will drain off onto your paper. So then moved over to the box itself. Just had a really skinny nail punch out of this set. And there's only two hinges, so it was quick work to pop the two little pins out and then put those in Evaporust too. So here I did take a tin from Valentine's Day, which is kind of a selfish gesture. I gave her candy with a metal tin, so that way I could actually reuse it for myself. So don't tell her. She doesn't watch my videos, so she won't know. Anyway, the crud cutter is where I went next on this plastic uh, socket holder. This stuff works great. It will leave a little kind of an oily residue. So if you use as much as I did here, just be prepared to have a, a lot of kind of oily feeling all over the place. But after getting it rinsed off and wiped down, it turned out pretty well. But it was nighttime at that point, so I put the two pieces of the box themselves that are separated, put them in this little mortise tray, and use a gallon of vinegar. Again, I'm not overly excited about using vinegar, but I do use it for the initial rust removal and really thick rust remover where I'll just leave it outdoors so I don't have to smell it. So you can see I've used this for quite a while. Then next morning, once the sun's up and it's been soaking for several hours, just take them out and scrub them down with a wire brush. So then it, <laughs> here's me struggling to pull the pins out of this uh, little jar of evaporust. I think I spent more time trying to get them out of the jar than I did getting them out of the actual toolbox themselves. But evaporust again works great. You can see there's silver here. So I wiped them down and then after that took them over to the wire wheel and you'll notice after you take them out of vinegar or evaporust or any rust remover they're going to be really dull so I'd like to take the wire wheel and get them back where that way you can see a little shine. Looks like my buffing wheel is about to pop off. I should probably do a little work there to fix this grinder. But anyway, get them uh, shiny and back to being really silver, no rust at all. And once that's done, I tend to put oil on them. That way they don't have any kind of chance of rusting while I'm doing the rest of the work. So again, you don't have to put a whole lot on there, just enough to keep rust away. Once that was done, I went over and you can see the flash rusting. This is an hour after taking out of vinegar and scratching off all the rust. That much rust just showed right back up. So then I had a little attachment on the drill. This is a soft brass brush that I used to get in the corners. And it does its job pretty well. And I was too worried about the thin metal here, so I used just another attachment for the big pieces. And you can see after a while, all that rust is gone and it exposed some heavy pitting and then a couple of little holes, which I did not see because the rust had actually caked over them. But we'll take care of that. So you can see all this paint, it, not much actually came off of the good metal. This is more coming out from sitting on top of rust and just sections that it's just bizarre. So not a big deal. I'm going to repaint anyway. So after using the wire brush and getting the major pieces, took some 120 grit sandpaper, put it on the orbital sander, and went to work outside. Once that's finished, I took off the sandpaper and got in the corners by hand. 
And again, I'm just showing the snapshot of each of these, not showing you the lengthy process of any of these steps. So then went inside, I had this art automotive hammer that I restored a long time ago and never actually got to put to use till now, so it's working well. Just put a solid block that's smooth and even behind it and pound out any of the big dents that I may have. So once the dents were finished and the initial sanding and all that was finished, took some acetone and poured it on to wipe off any of the remaining residue, the oils, that kind of stuff. That way when I go to do the body filler, the Bondo, it'll attach much better. So this is my first effort. I've never used Bondo before and this is not the tube part. I bought a small tube just because I don't intend on using it a whole lot. So what you'll see are the holes here and it's going to seep through so it's a good idea to actually put painter's tape on the inside that way when you're putting this stuff on there it doesn't all fall through and kind of waste any of the material that you wanted to do. And I just used a popsicle stick, a craft stick, spread this stuff on and you can kind of see what it looks like after a while. So once it's all set just took a piece of 320 grit sandpaper and sanded it down and again, this is what it looks like after the fact. So here, this time I did put the painter's tape on there and then turned it over, worked on the inside piece, which where all that real pitting was. So I'm not good at sanding this stuff yet. I didn't spend a whole lot of time. This is a piece I'm going to be getting rid of anyway. So looking up at the light, you could see, well, you can't, but I could see the light coming through. So a couple of little spots I had to fill again. So off camera, sanded it down, and then once I got that piece ready, took it outside and put a coat of primer on top. So then the primer actually makes it really easy for me to see the dents that I missed. So here's one, and then kind of the rough edges that I did not do a good job of sanding the Bondo away. So here, get the block of wood out yet again and hammer out these last few dents which it works out fine. And then sanded it down and again 320 grit for me if you want to go more aggressive or less aggressive that's all up to you. But I'm sure the automotive guys are making fun of me for my Bondo work here. But once I had all that done, wiped it off with some mineral spirits again, then took it outside and put on the first of two coats of actual spray paint on top. So this is one of the few time-lapse pieces I left. And thankfully the dog decided to go off camera to do his business there. I thought he was about to show up on cam and let loose, but we'll let it go. So here, this is just the first of two coats, as I said. So ended up with two and then did a clear coat on top when it was all said and done at the end. But it turned out pretty well. I like what I'm what I came up with. You will see again the, the Bondo sections I did not spend a whole lot of time and effort on sanding them so you can easily critique it if you want but the bigger pictures this is solid blue again and I like the way it turned out. So here just putting the pins in and part I would do differently if uh, to do it over is I'm trying to hammer this back down without opening it further up so I kind of put two little marks on the uh, inside but again whoever's going to get this box I'm sure they're going to put a few more scratches on it than I did. So here the second pin I did actually close it to get it in there more easily. easily, I guess, being a relative term since it's taking up more video footage than I intended. <laughs> so, then here just tapping in just a little bit so these grooves line up and I'm able to get that pin in more easily. So there you go, you can see that it opens and closes again, which is fantastic. I did speed it up here because I put the sockets in on the wrong side. 
So I just sped it up so you wouldn't have to watch me <laughs> do it in real time. So got them on there, and then you see it closes up, and here's a good shot of it where I think I did a pretty decent job, and it's at least shiny. The clear coat is definitely something I recommend for any metal projects that you spray paint. Clear coat gives it that little extra protection so it doesn't scratch up quite as easily. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I saw a couple of pointers that you like. And feel free to comment with any questions or comments. And again, here's some before and after photos and a good bit of change. But as always, thanks for watching and let me know what you think. See ya.